Hello and welcome to Wealthy Trades Daily Market Forecast. This is Tyson Clayton and today is March 17th, 2015. Let's get started. Let's actually recap yesterday's price action uh, first. We're, hit, we're starting to get a lot of volatility within the markets and in fact I'm going to go into do some analysis on the SPY, the S&P uh, ETF, uh, SPY in a minute here and kind of go over the levels and what we can expect because there was some hints within the SPY yesterday that would have told us and actually in, in fact there were hints in the XLP too but if you remember yesterday uh, um, the core trade within the sector was short the XLP we rolled in with uh, an aggressive downtrend the quality was good it, it was different than the picture we have today uh, which I'll go into in a minute but essentially if you remember I said I want to go short the XLP the trend side uh, levels did well so I said, let's add to the position if it hits the downside level, and, but I want, I want to take a stop on the position if it hits the upside level. Uh, and the upside level um, in the XLP was 48.56. So uh, it went short at 48.43 uh, in the XLP and took a stop at 48.56 uh, for 13 cents. So it uh, looks, looks like it was a good stop. Um, again, 48.56 was a stop. It closed at 48.87, so that's good. Save some money. And we used the levels to win data to help us get out. Because if you remember, what we said is it when it hits that counter trend level, when it hits that level, it has a tendency of closing above that level more often than not. So we said, you know what, that's a good place to take a stop. And that's what we did. Uh, we also had two other uh, positions. Um, again, huge rally day yesterday. So and we were going short, so it wasn't a great day. Uh, but uh, we're able to manage the trades uh, into not huge losses. EL took two short positions there, um, took a one stop for, uh, actually held it all day long, uh, went short right at the open. Um, first stop was down at about 18 cents, nothing huge. Um, and then the second short took at uh, the expected high, which was 81.11, and closed that out for 81.15, so only four cents there. And then K um, took a small stop in this one too, so nothing, nothing real big. But um, <clears throat> again, when we're going into the day uh, short and the market rallies in our face, it's it's a little bit of a trend shift day. We didn't quite get a trend shift, but uh, but that does happen every once in a while as a trend trader. But it, let's uh, for K, what it, what I did is I went short at the open, uh, held it uh, for a 53 cent uh, loss on that one, and then uh, went short. The expected high took another 28 cents so nothing huge um, today we're gonna be doing a pairs trade which I'll go into in a minute but what I do want to do is I want to start uh, actually today and go into the spy and, and I think this is a good idea and I'm gonna start doing this on the videos I want to go into the spy and kind of um, analyze how we can manage this uh, so you understand the expectations yesterday if you would have went into the spy you would have seen that okay it was in a downtrend but when it hit much like the XLP when when the spy hit and the spy is the S&P ETF when it hits the expected upside in a downtrend on a Monday alright so that's what this information is telling us it had a tendency it lost money so it had a tendency to continue to go higher so us you know structuring very nimble short positions yesterday was the way to go using short positions much like we did in the XLP was the best plan what I mean by that is, if you remember the XLP, the plan was, well, go short at the open, but use the expected high as the stop. So we only lost 13 cents in the XLP. Very small loss on a day that we were looking to short when the market rallies, you know, aggressively uh, uh, against us. So anyway, not a huge down day, um, not a huge uh, loss day. So uh, managed it, managed it well, um, and pared it down to the best best positions but let's go into the spy real quick it's got an expected low of 207.50 expected high uh, of 209.66 um, futures are down right now and we're sitting at a pretty key level actually you know if I look at the charts here this is gonna be a pretty difficult level we got a little bit of a gap down around this level and this is kind of a, a, it, I call this a battle zone right so all the way up to you know right around this 212 um, down to about 208 level in the SPY is going to be a very difficult uh, area and we could be longer term could be kind of trying to put in kind of a, a longer term rounding top or head and shoulders pattern um, to maybe get there's some levels down down below that I think we need to go and, and kind of fill some of these gaps 
on the way up here. Um, I, I wouldn't be shocked if we don't see 187 again within the next um, you know, couple months. But it all depends on what happens at these levels. So anyway, so this is going to be a very difficult level for us to get through. Again, the futures are down right now, so that doesn't shock me. I sent out a tweet last night saying that this is going to be a, a, a difficult level for us to continue to rally above. But if we do start breaking above this level, I'd say break, if we start breaking above the 209.50-210 level, then you know what? I think we're going to all-time highs, and I think we could put in another nice leg higher um, that pushes us probably to 215 or higher pretty fast. So anyway, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll talk about that. It's probably not going to happen today. I think we're going to get a sell-off today. Uh, it is a good trending day. Um, it doesn't hit the trend side. This is this is a little unique. It doesn't hit the trend side as often as, as it hits the counter trend side. Okay, if you remember, um, about six, seven, eight months ago, there was turnaround Tuesday, right? It's Tuesday the 17th, and so turnaround Tuesday was was big rally days, right? So this, usually we get rallies, but here's the thing. These are good rallies to fade, to short, because when it hits this expected high, so the expected high is 209.66, when it hits that, and it hits that 53.8% of the time, more often than not, it closes, it hits it, and then closes below that. So what I mean by that is, here's the expected high up here, and when it hits that expected high, it typically, historically, hits that and then closes lower. We, can, we know that because it, it makes a profit there, and more than 50% of the time that it hits that, it ends up closing lower. So that's good. But then also on Tuesdays, when it it only hits the downside 44.2% of the time, but when it does, it typically ends up going uh, pretty substantially lower. So Tuesdays look to be high volatility days just based on what I'm seeing right here. So uh, again, it, it, it does look like it's going to be a decent day uh, on the short side. Um, we're not going to just blindly, uh, blindly go short um, because of the quality gauge, but let's go into that right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let me go to my portfolio and eliminate what I put in there for yesterday first, and then let's go to the dashboard and talk about our game plan for today. All right, so our game plan for today is we are in a downtrend, and we don't want to just blindly short because the quality gauge is 43.6%, and if it's below 50%, we want to hedge our positions. We may want to structure more of an aggressive position towards the direction of the trend we don't want to just go blind blind into that direction we want to hedge it so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, look for short positions in the XL, XLE the energy sector because it's it's the best sector uh, to short in it's got the highest quality gauge in the short uh, in, a, in a down market and then we look, want to look for hedged long positions in the XLU the utility sector so because that's the best sector in fact that's the only sector um, you know, 56.7% of the stocks in the XLU is in a downtrend, but the XLU, the utility sector itself, is actually in an uptrend. It's kind of a, a, a conundrum, an oxymoronic type of market. But anyway, so I'm going to hit the plus sign next to those two uh, because uh, I'm going to drag those into my portfolio. And, uh, and then I want to analyze those. Okay, so I'm going to keep it real simple. I, I, I'm gonna, I will drill into, in a minute, I'll drill into the best stocks within the XLE to potentially short. And then you can hedge it with an XL, uh, long XLU. But let's go into the XLE first. All right, so the XLE, XLE um, itself is uh, it looks good and makes money on both sides. Uh, well, remember, what we want to see is we want to see a, a high HPP trend side. That's good. Higher than the counter trend side. That's good. And we want to see this right here. We want to see the fact that it closes. So it hits this level. All right, so it hits 75.05 50% of the time. And when it hits that level, it, it closes below that level. Actually, overall, it closes below that level 30.8% of the time. So that means that when it hits this level, more often than not, more more times than than uh, you know about you know 60% of the time or so, it ends up closing lower than that level. So that's good. That's uh, that's excellent. Um, and and in fact, we have got a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of air between, you know, I could see if it breaks through this level, I could see it actually ended up going lower, and that's that's showing in the levels to win profit, and the fact that it, when it hits that 7505, it typically ends up going lower. Um, and on the counter trend side, um, again, this kind of shows the volatility. It, now, when it hits this upside level, it has a tendency of selling off, but more often than not, it closes above that level. So that's not, that's not phenomenal. Uh, in fact, I might want to use this level 
if, if I were just going to shorten the XLE, I would use the 7623 level as a stop. But remember, we're not going to just short today. We're going to do a hedge trade because of the quality. So I do like structuring a short position right at the open in the XLE. Um, and I think you can hold that all day long. And you can hedge that with a long position in the XLU. In the XLU, when you're doing a hedge position or a Paris trade like this, I don't want to say you can just ignore the stats, but you don't have to pay attention to them as much because, remember, if the XLU does sell off or has a bad day, well, you got that paired up with, with the XLE. And you already have the probability in your favor because you're going short the best sector to go short in in a downtrend, and you're going long the sector that should give you the best opportunity on the long side. So, again, the pairs trade is a phenomenal trade in this, in this environment. So, to keep it real simple, Go long at the open in the XLE, short the XLU at the open, and hold that uh, that uh, pairs trade all day long. To to drill it in a little deeper, um, just real quick, I can kind of go in and see if uh, if I can find um, the best stock within the XLE to short to maybe get a little more juice um, out of this. And I can I'm gonna use the same pairing, so I'm looking at the levels to win profit first and foremost as my first uh, indication of whether I want to keep it or not. And I'm eliminating any any of the stocks that uh, that lose money. And I'm going to keep the ones that make money on both sides. So, okay, so there we go. Um, all right, so now I want to see uh, 50, over 50% 50 here, under 50% here. Um, so EQ T's uh, not quite doesn't quite meet that requirement. Um, a APA doesn't quite meet that requirement. I'm just seeing if there's any that meet this requirement here. CDX no. Do no. Um, hmm, okay. Yeah. So so there's I think the the best one EQT doesn't meet on both sides so let me see here 26.9 okay has a tendency APA has a tendency to hit the counter trend side less than CDX so that's good that one has a tendency um, alright so I think the if you want to go into individual stocks you can look to short the APA um, and hedge it with long XLU, short CVX, hedge it with long XLU, or just keep it real simple, like I said, short XLE, long XLU, uh, as a pair trade, hold all day long. Um, real quick, let me just see if there's anything in the XLU that looks okay. Just to see if I can kind of get this a little better. This all makes sense in a minute. Okay, give me a second here. Okay, so uh, again, you know, because of the quality, um, simplest trade, long XLE, I'm sorry, lo long XLU, short XLE, at the open, hold all day long. If you want to uh, make it a little more uh, intriguing, you can go uh, short APA, long XLU, um, to make it a little, you know, may maybe you could have a little more juice on the downside. Even though the look at the XLE, the XLE actually has a higher hit rate so uh, than than these. So let's just keep it real simple: short XLE, long XLU, at the open, hedge it all day long. That is the trade, um, and uh, and and that uh, will keep it simple because the quality gauge is below. I do want to recap uh, the week. The week right now, you should be long the XLU, short the XLE, exactly much like we are today. Um, and uh, because the quality of the week is, is below 50%, so therefore we want to go long the best and short the worst. And then for the month, 
you should be long the XLV. And here's the thing, and this is actually uh, doing very well. Uh, this long XLV is up um, about 1% for the month, and uh, the market is down about 1% for the month. So the outperformance of the XLV is phenomenal. And that was all uh, shown by going, you know, at the beginning of this month, uh, you would have seen as a longer term investor, you would have said, okay, well, I need to go long the XLV and hold it all month long. So anyway, that is today. Uh, that, is, that is the uh, the market forecast for March 17th, uh, Tuesday, March 17th. Uh, today, we're keeping it real simple. Go short the XLE, long the XLU. That's the exact same trade that we're putting on for the weekly trade. And then for the month, you should be long the XLV. Uh, thank you for listening. Make it a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.